Greetings. My name is Josh Malias, and I'm a Senior Marketing Product Manager at Miltony Biotech. And today I'll be talking about tumor processing for the isolation and visualization of tumor infiltrating leukocytes. In today's agenda, we'll cover some background information about Miltony Biotech and about tumor infiltrating leukocytes and why they're so important. We'll then focus on the majority of the talk, which is till isolation for improved downstream applications and analyses. There are seven different sections, starting with the importance of sample preparation. Next, we'll talk about both manual and automated till isolation using MAX technology. We'll then talk about expanding till using cell culture, as well as the phenotypic analysis of tills using flow cytometry and single cell sequencing. And finally, we'll talk about the visualization of tumors using light sheet microscopy. We'll then have a few concluding remarks and then questions if time permits. So now we'll talk a little bit about Miltenny Biotech. Empowering discovery and advancing therapy. These words really do get to the core mission of this company, and that is to improve scientific understanding and medical progress by providing solutions that advance biomedical research and cellular therapies. And we achieve this by our ongoing commitment to providing newer and smarter technologies to the scientists and clinicians that are paving the way for longer and healthier lives. And as a company, we were able to do this with 30 years of experience and nearly 3,000 employees, 20% of which are in research and development, which is well above industry standards. Our products have been published in more than 20,000 papers, and we have nearly 20,000 products. But I think the most impressive number on this slide are the more than 55,000 cellular therapy procedures that have been carried out using our technology, and more than 2,500 patients that have been treated with cellular therapies using our platforms. So next, we'll move on from Miltenny Biotech and talk about TILs. And why are we talking about TILs, and why are they so important? And I think to adequately address this, we have to talk about the uncomfortable topic of death. So, the history of death as told by humans. So in order to do this, we have to take a step back, step way back about 30,000 years to one of our more our latest common ancestors who lived to be about 30 years of age and would die from a variety of reasons, including falling from rocks or succumbing to injuries from hunting, starvation, disease, predation. And over the next 29,900 years, we only gained about 10 years. But in the past 125 years, we've more than doubled our life expectancy. Now, this occurred around the turn of the 20th century and can largely be attributed to accessibility to antibiotics, worldwide vaccination campaigns, and advancements in water purification technologies. Now, despite all of these advancements, we still die. But how we die has changed. If you look at the United States in 1900 at the turn of the 20th century, 53% of people would succumb to infectious disease. Fast forward 110 years, that number dropped to 3%. Now, that void was filled by cardio disease, and cancer, with cancer increasing by more than 500% in that time period. And as you can clearly see, in 2016 and 2017, cancer was the second leading cause of death in the United States. And when we look at the types of cancers that are causing the death, a vast majority, over 90%, are solid tumors. And this is directly applicable to the topic we're talking about today with tumor infiltrating leukocytes. Now, when someone's diagnosed with cancer, there are various treatment options available. These include surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. Uh, they have significant side effects. Um, there are therapies that target specific mutations in tumors, but in the last decade, much of the focus has been on immunotherapies. Now, there are a lot of different immunotherapies that are connected with a lot of different immune cells. There are T and NK cell therapies, there are cancer vaccines, checkpoint inhibitors, checkpoint modulators, oncolytic viruses, all of which uh, affect both the adaptive and innate immune systems. And it can actually, their effects can be uh, quite broad in effect. This next slide kind of shows 
with the traditional standard of care on the left and immunotherapies on the right, you can see that all of these different arrows show the, the pleiotropic effects of these different therapies. And the purpose of this slide is, is not to explain everything, but to highlight that a vast majority of these impact the tumor microenvironment and the tumor infiltrating leukocytes that reside within. Now, tumor, tumor infiltrating leukocytes uh, are comprised of a lot of different white blood cells. You have dendritic cells, T cells, both CD4 and CD8. You have T regulatory cells, macrophages, uh, NK cells, and, and other subtypes. And all of these cells can have both pro and anti tumorigenic properties. Now, one of the featured applications of uh, therapeutic applications of TILS uh, came out last year. Uh, where a patient that had uh, metastatic breast cancer had TILs isolated from her tumor. These were screened against a panel of neoepitopes. Uh, reactive CD4 and CD8 cells of interest were then expanded in vitro, uh, were reintroduced into this patient, and she underwent a uh, complete and durable regression uh, for a two-year period. Now, this is very exciting and shows the therapeutic potential of these cells, um, and this is seen in the clinical trial um, in the clinical trial field where you have more than 500 um, occurring right now. A majority of these are within the United States and within Europe, uh, but there's also an increasing number uh, in China and Asia, Asia Pacific. So moving on to our TIL workflow. So we start with our solid tissue, in this case it being it's a tumor. We then move to sample preparation, followed by cell separation to isolate your cell type of interest and follow that with various downstream applications. These can include cell culture, cell analysis, single cell sequencing, but we've also added a new workflow, and this allows you to take 3D images of whole tumors uh, utilizing uh, light sheet microscopy. So we'll start with the importance of sample preparation. So we start with a solid tumor. Solid tumor is comprised of a mixture of cells, extracellular matrices, basal membranes, vasculature, necrotic tissue, fat. And while it's ideal to process a tissue or a tumor immediately, sometimes that's not possible if it needs to be shipped to another lab or if it arrives late at night. Fortunately, we have a solution, a tissue storage solution. And this allows you to keep your cells for up to 48 hours and maintain cell viability and functionality. Uh, this graph here is showing uh, after 48 hours, uh, tills recovered from a tumor after being stored either at four degrees or at room temperature compared to two of the competitors uh, or a fresh tumor where obviously you're gonna lose all of your cells after 48 hours. So whether you're starting with fresh tumor tissue or tumor tissue that has been stored for 48 hours or less in our tissue storage solution, the first goal of your tissue dissociation should be to reproducibly dissociate the tumor into a single cell suspension. Now the basic approach to this would be mechanical disruption this is mincing and chopping, straining, mashing, combined with enzymatic digestion. And at the end of the day, it's not much different than preparation of food. Now, the second goal should be preservation of surface epitopes. Now, this is important for accurate phenotyping and downstream functional assays. And you have a lot of different choices when it comes to enzymes. They come from different sources, they have different targets, and they have different strengths. And what happens when you are using a variety of different enzymes is you can have a low yield with high viability, which means you probably underdigested. You should increase the concentration or perhaps switch to a stronger enzyme. Conversely, if you have a high yield and low viability, the digestion has been too strong. You should either de decrease the concentration or maybe reduce the incubation time. Now, the problem with this is making these adjustments consumes time and resources, and it's only applicable to that specific batch of enzyme from that specific vendor. There's a huge amount of variability when it comes to the type, the quality, and nomenclature of the enzymes that are out there. Fortunately, we have come up with a tumor dissociation kit uh, that has quality assured, lot consistent enzymatic activities for reproducibility. We've optimally titrated these for increased yields and higher viability of cells. And we make sure to have the preservation of surface epitopes in both human and mouse tills. So the third goal should be to maintain cell viability and functionality. And this is something that I'll talk about in more detail in the next section. 
Introduction to the gentle max. So we've talked about mechanical disruption and enzymatic digestion, and it's really important to have a balance between the two. And to that extent, we have developed the gentle max. It is a highly reliable and user-independent tissue dissociator. Next, I'll show you a brief video of what it looks like to dissociate a, a mouse tumor using the gentle max octo with heaters. Now that we've seen how easy and user-independent tumor dissociation is into a single cell suspension using the Genomax Octo with heaters, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of the tissue dissociation kit itself. And one way to really show this is to use the tissue dissociation kit when digesting a tumor and seeing what populations that you get. So if you don't use the kit, it's a lot harder to find any of the TIM3 positive, PD1 positive, or LAG3 positive, PD1 positive cells of interest. But when we utilize our tissue dissociation kit, you can readily see those populations become visible. And here's the difference in those percentages. A lot of times the cells of interest are right at the interface of the tumor, and standard dissociation techniques are not capable of getting those cells separated and allowing you to analyze those. So we've developed an epitope preservation list for both human and mouse. We look at the sensitivity of these different epitopes to our tissue dissociation kits and to see if they're stable, moderately sensitive, or strongly sensitive. And if your epitope of interest is strongly sensitive or moderately sensitive to our tumor dissociation kits, you can preserve 100% of the epitopes by reducing enzyme R. Now, aside from being able to accurately phenotype these cells, epitopes are important also for functionality. So we took a look at Two different patients, we isolated uh, T cells from two different patients and co incubated them with autologous tumor cells. And you can see that when comparing overnight digestion versus di uh, dissociation using the Genomax, that both patients were able to produce significantly more interferon gamma when co cultured with their autologous tumors. In summary, with the Genomax, we ask you to start smart. We have our Genomax dissociator, we have our tissue dissociation kits, as well as our Genomax tubes, strainers and filters, as well as our tissue storage solution to have your sample preparation start off right. 
Now that we have our single cell suspension, we can now isolate our tills using Max technology. Now Max technology is comprised of three main components, the first being our microbeads. These microbeads are small, about 50 nanometers in size. They're made of iron oxide that are conjugated to antibodies that are specific for the cells of interest. When combined with our max columns, which are really the, the heart of the technology uh, that allow the magnetic field to be increased by 10,000 fold when placed inside of our separators, the combination of these three allow for minimal labeling, excellent purity, excellent recovery, and high specificity. Now this video shows the principle in action. This video demonstrates what is taking place inside the column with both the target and non-target cells flowing freely through the steel ball matrix when outside of the magnetic separator. The target cells have been minimally labeled with our microbeads, and once the column is placed inside the separator, the highly amplified magnetic forces cause the target cells to hover in suspension, while the non-target cells continue to flow freely through the column. Note that the cells are being held in suspension and are not pressed up against the steel ball matrix. Once the column is removed from the separator, the paramagnetic microbeads no longer have the attraction to the steel ball matrix and your purified tills flow freely out of the column and into what undoubtedly will be a wildly successful experiment. So that video showed you the basic principle of MAX technology. Now when we look at the different types of T-cell subsets that can be isolated using our uh, till microbeads, we have our CD4 microbeads, we have our CD8 microbeads, as well as our CD4 and CD8 microbeads if you're interested in both populations. But how do we actually get these cells and what does that look like? On the next slide, I'll show you a video of what it looks like to isolate pills using Max technology. So now that we've seen how easy it is to isolate tills using Max technology, well, I want to talk about one of the primary benefits, and that's the time that's saved. The time that's saved when you're doing your phenotypic analysis at a flow cytometer. If you look at the amount of time that it takes to analyze 8 to 10 samples of uh, isolated or bulk samples, you can see uh, the amount of time saved is dramatic. This is, as I mentioned, only 8 or 9 samples, but what if you're processing lots of samples? Now, this is where cell separation meets German automation. We have our manual separation. You can uh, increase that in the manual uh, method by using an octo uh, that has eight separators. If you want a fully automated system, we have the Automax Pro separator that allows you to isolate up to six samples at a time, uh, and it's completely uh, automated. If you're interested in a little bit more throughput, we have our Multimax Cell 24 Separator Plus. This is a semi-automated instrument that allows you to separate up to 24 samples at a time. And the combination of the two, we have the Multimax X, which is a fully automated high throughput instrument that allows for the isolation fully automated of up to 24 till samples at a time. And if we look at the relative performance of the isolation method that we talked about, you can see that manual separation, the Multimax 24 and the Multimax X uh, have comparable performance when it comes to purity and yield. Now another method when people are looking to isolate cells of interest is cell sorting. And to that extent, we have the MaxQuant Tido. It is a gentle cell sorting system and it, with a closed cartridge uh, that has no sheath fluid. 
It's engineered for operator safety with no aerosols or droplet formation, and it has intuitive handling suitable for any lab professional. In this next video, we'll show you how the cartridge really is the heart of the Taito. The MaxQuant Taito cartridge represents the heart of the MaxQuant Taito sorter. It is a fully closed system containing three chambers, an input chamber, a positive sort chamber where target cells are collected, and a negative sort chamber where non-selected cells remain after each sort. Note, sorting happens exclusively in the cartridge. There are no fluidics within the instrument itself. All three chambers can be accessed from above through lure lock ports, which allow for easy loading of the sample. After loading the sample into the input chamber, the cartridge is placed inside the instrument. At the beginning of the sort process, pre-filtered air coming from the instrument enters through a 0.1 micrometer filter at the bottom of the cartridge. The air then moves through an air channel and finally enters the input chamber through another 0.1 micrometer filter. The very mild air pressure drives the cell suspension through a microfluidic channel onto the microchip where the selected target cells are then sorted into positive and negative fractions. After entering the microchannel, cells are interrogated by three lasers. Upon identification of a target cell, a magnetic pulse opens the microvalve which then redirects the target cell into the positive collection chamber. The whole sorting procedure happens at a very low pressure of only 3 psi and there is no decompression or charge applied to the cells. After the sort has been completed, the MaxQuant Taito cartridge is taken out of the instrument and the sample can be retrieved under a sterile hood for further processing. As you can see, sorting within the closed and sterile environment of the MaxQuant Taito cartridge is much gentler and easier than on a conventional droplet sorter. MaxQuant Taito. Fast and easy. Gentle to cells. Fully sterile. And completely safe. Visit us at miltonybiotech.com slash Taito. Miltony Biotech. Now that we've isolated our tills of interest using either Max Technology or the Max Quant Taito, these cells are now suitable for downstream applications. The first of which that we're going to talk about is cell culture. Now, if you have an interest in expanding your tills, there are obviously a lot of different components that are necessary for this, the first of which is media. Now, we recommend using a lineage-specific media to which we have both T-cell and NK-cell media. Our T-cell media is called Texmax. It's been optimized for cell culture, developed for high-performance cultivation of both human and mouse T-cells. You'll be able to get optimal growth, high expansion rates, and reliable activation. And this has been designed to function uh, without serum. Our NK medium has been optimized for the expansion of human NK cells. You'll see superior NK expansion using this product. It's xeno-free, and it's been designed to uh, result in minimal growth of unwanted cells, especially T cells. Now, in addition to media, you're going to need cytokines. Uh, we have both human and mouse from research premium grade to GMP. Uh, but one of the things that's important to talk about when with cytokine usage is lot specific activity. In this next video, you'll see why it is so important to know the lot specific activity of the cytokines that you're using in your experiments. Each lot of a standard cytokine has a dedicated biological activity. This means, although you always add the same amount of cytokine in nanograms to your cell culture experiments, you might end up adding different amounts of active cytokine. The cytokine activity affects the response you measure. While low unit concentrations lead to low response rates, a small increase of units per milliliter can cause a huge jump in the response. Finally, the response curve hits a plateau. Relying on nanogram amounts, you never really know how much active cytokine you're adding. To be sure to achieve maximal response rates, huge nanogram amounts are added. As a result, cells are often oversaturated and very artificial cell culture conditions are created. But did you know 
that there is a way to check the precise cytokine activity? With Max Premium Grade Cytokines, you know the lot-specific cytokine activity because we already did the testing for you. Relying on this information, you can always add the same amount of active cytokine to your experiment. You can rule out any kind of variability, moving a huge step closer to reproducible cell culture results. Plus, you don't need to oversaturate your experiment anymore. This also means that you can use up to 10 times less reagent. Choose lot-specific cytokine activity with Max Premium Grade Cytokines to save time, increase reproducibility, and reduce costs. Now that we've seen the importance of lot-specific activity when adding cytokines to your cell culture, if you're going to be expanding T-cells, you'll need to activate them. To that extent, we've developed T-Cell Transact for human T-cells. Now this product uses volumetric dosing, which means you don't have to count your cells for accurate bead to cell ratios. It's ready to use. You don't have to mix for a minute uh, prior to usage. Uh, you can remove it by a simple wash. You don't have to go through a de-beading step that's going to result in significant loss of your cells. We have a robust stimulation. Uh, we have high cell viability. Uh, and we have this product available up to GMP. And this is important for researchers that are looking to translate their studies. As mentioned, the uh, GMP availability of Transact, that is not restricted only to that, but also uh, we have that for our media and cytokines. And so our cell culture portfolio really is primed for individuals that are looking to translate their research. Aside from just the products, we also have a platform that allows you to expand cells, and this is the Clinimax Prodigy. The Clinimax Prodigy allows for the expansion of TILs in a functionally closed and automated system. Next, we'll show a brief video highlighting some of the capabilities and features of this platform. So as you can see, we not only have the reagents, but we also have the instrumentation for the expansion of TILs in vitro. This next section is entitled Cell Analysis, Reassess Your Antibodies. And the reason we're talking about this has to do with reproducibility and the role that antibodies have played uh, in the lack thereof. Now, standard hybridova antibodies have a lot of um, problems that are associated with them. You can get spontaneous light chains that pop up. You can get mutations over time. And to that extent, we came up with our own antibodies. Now, these are recombinantly generated. Uh, these are made to meet new reproducibility standards. We utilize one universal isotype, that's human IgG1. This is made to reduce complexity of experiment planning. And we've also mutated the FC region. And this is especially important when talking about TIL analysis, as this is made to eliminate background signal. To highlight the importance of this FC mutation, we have two different samples. We have splenocytes and tumor cells with or without FCR blocking, comparing our re-affinity antibodies to typical uh, hybridoma antibodies. And you can see in splenocytes, uh, without FCR blocking, where there isn't a lot of FCR expression, the difference between the two is, is not much. Uh, when you add FCR blocking, they again are very similar. 
But when you look at tumor cells, the background, and because these express such high levels of FCR, you can see using traditional hybridoma antibodies that you're not able to distinguish tumor cells from non-tumor cells. Even with FCR blocking, the background is much higher than that of reaffinity. So reaffinity doesn't not just replace FCR blocking, it's better than FCR blocking. To this extent, we've come up with an application note recently that uh, talks about the background free analysis of TILs. And the primary takeaway point is that if you're not blocking the FCR receptor adequately, you can grossly overestimate the number of TILs in the populations that are represented amongst them. So for accurate phenotypic analysis, it's critically important to have FC blocking or more preferably have a mutated FC region uh, that allows for minimal background staining. We've come up with a couple of different panels for TIL phenotypic analysis. All of these are using our RIA antibodies. And now that you've stained your enriched TILs for, uh, the, with the above panels, it's time to go to the flow cytometer. That is an introduction to the max quant family of flow cytometers. We have a variety of different cytometers for different needs. We have the max quant vibe that utilizes a yellow laser for fluorescent proteins. We have the max quant 10. We have the max quant 16 for more parameters if that's what's necessary. And we also have the max quant X for high throughput analysis. So now that we talked about cell culture and cell analysis, we're going to talk about single cell sequencing. So we've had a relatively recent collaborative development with 10X Genomics, and this came about, and when you look at the pie graph below, you can see that a vast majority of the technical support questions that 10X was fielding from their customers had to do with sample prep and their workflow. So we've looked at three primary um, ways to clean up the sample prep. We looked at debris removal, red blood cell lysis, and dead cell removal. And we compared the results and how that improved um, the readout of single cell sequencing. As mentioned, we have our RBC lysis that allows you to lyse the blood cells of interest. We have our debris removal that will get rid of a lot of the background signal. And then we have our dead cell removal. Uh, these cells produce toxic compounds and can impact downstream applications. They're also very sticky, which makes single cell sequencing very difficult. So the basic study design is we looked at a breast uh, tumor model, the 4T1 model. We looked at tumors, we dissociated them, filtrated them, they underwent RBC lysis, and then one or two rounds of dead cell removal. We looked at nine different tumors from three different tissues and did three different repetitions, and we looked at over 84,000 single cells. The goals of the, of the study were to look at the performance, the reproducibility, and the tumor heterogeneity. So first, when we look at either post-filtration uh, with debris removal, if we look at post-RBC lysis B uh, or C or D, which are post-dead cell removals uh, once or twice, you can see that uh, library cleanliness goes up as well as the library complexity. When you look at reproducibility of uh, filtered only versus uh, samples that have RBC and uh, dead cell removal, you can see that the reproducibility is better uh, as well as the, uh, the signal of, of the cells. And lastly, we looked at the heterogeneity that one is able to get from these samples. And you can see that by removing RBCs and removing the dead cells, that you get a much clearer picture of what's going on within the tumor. So these are our primary uh, applications that we've focused on. But recently, we have another layer. And this has to do with 3D imaging using whole tissues. So there's a, a two-step protocol uh, that will ultimately allow you to take 3D pictures um, of tissues um, within. So in this next section, we'll talk about visualizing TILs with the ultramicroscope. Now, the ultramicroscope is flexible and easy. It's an optimized light sheet microscope. We provide you with all the clearing protocols necessary, and this allows you to interrogate and take 3D pictures of large samples. The basic process is the first, uh, you first need to immunostain uh, your tissue of interest, uh, and you can do this with one of our 14,000 different reaffinity antibodies. The second step is tissue clearing that allows you to remove both fat and liquids that cause diffraction of the light. 
And we can see here the result when we look at a pancreatic tumor uh, targeted with CAR T cells. This video shows a xenograft of a human pancreatic carcinoma cell line which expresses GFP along with infiltrating CAR T cells shown in violet. Sample reparation involved whole mount immunolabeling followed by ethyl cinnamate clearing. The 3D data of the tumor were created using the Ultramicroscope 2 light sheet microscope. The CAR T cells were labeled using RIA 844 clones conjugated with BIO 667, detecting human CD271 with vasculature being seen in orange. This video shows you the power of the ultramicroscope and how it allows you to visualize TILs where they are within the tumor microenvironment, something that's simply not possible with other workflows. So in summary, we've gone through all of the different steps of the two different workflows, whether it's for imaging or for sample preparation, cell separation, for cell culture, phenotypic analysis, or single cell sequencing. Now there's been a lot of information to digest, but this is really because we have such an extensive and comprehensive workflow for the TIL uh, for TIL researchers. So I'll summarize with a few key takeaway points from each section. First, with sample preparation, we talked about the advantages of the Genomax and the tumor dissociation kits. Primarily that it's user independent, it's fully automated, and it improves yield, viability, and reproducibility. By using this, by using this you preserve epitopes necessary for accurate phenotypic analysis as well as functional analyses. Next, we talk about the isolation of TILs using MAX technology. This allows for improved phenotypic resolution and accuracy while reducing the need for uh, the time needed for phenotypic analysis. Next, we talk about culturing TILs for both basic and translational research, uh, the importance of lineage-specific media, uh, lot-specific activity when utilizing cytokines, and the advantages of T-cell transact. So next, we talked about the analysis of TILs using our next generation of antibodies. These are our, our RIAs. Um, these are recombinantly generated antibodies that use a universal isotype, that being human IgG1, and a mutated FC region that greatly reduces background signal. And then finally, we talked about the visualization of TILs uh, and the clear advantage of the uh, Ultra Microscope 2, which allows you to visualize where these TILs are within the tumor microenvironment, uh, something that simply is not possible otherwise. So with that, I appreciate your time and interest, uh, and please let me know if you have any questions. Um, all resources will be available uh, at the booth, uh, and thank you for your attention.